It's a meeting in the LBC with two of the city's native sons, Snoop and Vince Staples. If Snoop is everyone's favorite uncle, then Vince Staples is the rowdy nephew. Never afraid to start shit or call it out, the North North rapper is one of today's most refreshing voices in hip hop, and in general. But don't underestimate the OG. One of the first rappers to break out beyond genre with his unfiltered personality, Snoop is a fixture and a philosopher when it comes to the state of our culture. Together, him and Vince represent two sides of the same coin. So what can we expect when one of the most respected veterans in the game faces off with one of the most unpredictable? This is Complex Conversations. Snoop and Vince Staples with your host, Pierce Simpson. I appreciate it. As we mentioned, we got two legends of Long Beach here. So I'm not gonna waste too much time. Y'all welcome to the stage, Vince Staples. What's up, my G? How you feeling? I'm good. <clears throat> so, FM dropped on Friday. Yes, sir. It's incredible. I love the, the way you kind of styled it like it was a radio show. It was incredible. You got Big Boy on there, a LA voice. How was that process? We wanted to recreate his show. Yeah. We were trying to ask him if he knew anybody that could do it. My manager, Corey Smith, was like, why don't you just ask him to do it? We asked him to do it. He said no. Then in like five minutes, he's like, nah, I'm just fucking with you, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. And then he did it, it was so pretty perfect. simple. So what makes you lean into Long Beach so much and not distance yourself from your hometown? A lot of artists, are just black people in general, do that. Mm. You're not meeting black people without knowing where they're from. You know, right, it's just right. not how it works. It says less about the artists and more mm. about the facilitation within yeah. these cities, because you can't stay here. Right. Because it's, we don't have as much as other places. It's unfortunate, but you know, it's just part of it. But I think all black artists and people just, we got a strong sense of where we're from. Right, right. And of course, Vince, you've created this type of profile for yourself where you're great on just commentary about different things. So I see in hip hop a lot of times when people go to certain cities and there's this checking in culture. One, what is the checking in culture and what's your stance on the checking in culture? Hey, look, man, I don't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, people be asking for it. What do you mean by that? If you mind your business and was like cool, wasn't uh -huh. bothering nobody, nobody making logic check-ins. Um, we were mentioning that you dropped your album yesterday, a lot of great reviews, I listened to it, it's incredible. Let me ask you a question, what's an album? That's a, that's a question you need to answer. What is oh, an album? Shit, I don't review them shit, y'all do. <laughs> but I don't work in music, you know what I'm saying? An album, why, why you say it under your breath like that? Because I know you, nigga, don't talk in front of these people like that. <laughs> I feel like an album is just like a, a, a body of work that I guess you would be comfortable with, but people consider mixtapes albums nowadays, so. Yeah, man, it's monetization. They take our money with everything now, so. They'll pay for your mixtape, right? Right. But they won't monetize it, but that goes up on your budget. So, say you got four albums as a commitment, right? Yeah. They'll be like, drop a mixtape, get hot. Drop an EP, get hot. Do this, get hot. So that's all money that's going back towards your budget, right? right. But it don't count as your commitment. Because once your commitment is up, you good. So basically you're running up your budget, staying in the red yeah. until they can pick something to monetize and get their max profit, but you still owe money. Right. So now they taking money from everything because they put everything on streaming services and blah, blah, and blah, blah. So I mean, I'm just always curious how, how the people that work in like the press <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious, I'm not trying to be funny. Like yeah. People that work in the press, like how do they determine what they call an album, what they don't call an album? I think our next guest might have something to say about that. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all please make some noise for the OG, the legend, Snoop Dogg. That's Big Dog, what's up, man? Good to see you, man. Yabba dabba do. What's happening? <laughs> Yo, Snoop, it's incredible to have you here in Long Beach, your city. How does it feel to be here? Because, I mean, a couple years ago, you performed here for the first time, so now you're back at Compass Con. How is it? It's crazy the way that they um, upgrade in the city, uh, the way that events like this can happen, the way that the rappers are, you know, taking it to a whole nother level. Like, I'm, I'm so impressed and so pleased with it because you got to remember, when I first started rapping, it was just gang banging and hustling. That was, you know, when athletics was our basic only way out. So to make it and then make a, uh, an impression on the next generation and plant a seed that you can see the seed growing and you watching them seeds and watching rappers take it to places that you couldn't take it to and you're not mad, you happy for them. So it's like, that's what I'm getting out of hip hop right now as far as, especially from the LBC is that 
these youngsters can do it on their own, and they don't need the stamp of Snoop Dogg. But it's good to have him there, but I don't need him. But if I, if I need him, I got him. You've been in the game for years now. You're a certified legend, but you seem to embrace the younger generation. Why is that? I, I love my young homies. I love, I love the, uh, the spirit of the young generation because I remember when I was young, it's good that I got footage so I can look at it and see how I was just like them. I was hard-headed, I was edgy, I was, you know, I was just exactly what they were. So for me to identify with them is a beautiful expression, especially when they call me Uncle Snoop. Because most rappers in the game, when they get old, they get old. And you don't get the persona of uncle. You just get pushed out. So for them to continue to have me in the circle and to still, you know, use me on records, use me for conversation, use me for knowledge in general, that's a blessing right there because the rap game, your, your, your career is probably three years at the best and then you out of here. Do unto others as you have them do unto you, that ain't correct because a lot of times you get done wrong. So if you get done wrong in the beginning, then that's a practice that you shouldn't preach. I wasn't gonna do what I was taught, I wasn't gonna do how people done me, I was gonna do better than people done me. When I signed the first group I had, which was the LBC crew and the Eastsiders, I gave them all of their publishing. I didn't want no publishing deal. My lawyers and everybody on my team was like, man, you gotta, you gotta get their publishing, dog. You giving them a deal. I'm like, but I'm not writing their songs. I don't wanna steal their pub. That's stealing to me. And Snoop, over the years, you mentioned your time with Death Row, you seem to reinvent yourself and just kinda cross over, but it's organic. A lot of artists, it just seems contrived. Was that something that you set out to do or is it something that just happened naturally? I think it's in the water in Long Beach. We, uh, we creatures of nature, we, we, we adapt to any environment. I think the industry is full of tricks and you just gotta be able to, to be a treat. You gotta be able to understand the industry, what it is and what it does. And I never let it get to me. I've always been three steps ahead of it because I've always done me. I didn't try to follow the fads. If my style don't work, if it don't get out, it just don't get out. But I'm gonna ride this shit all the way out till the wheels fall off. This is all I know is how to be me. And I think a lot of artists go wrong when they stop trying to master themselves and they try to master trying to be like somebody else. Be yourself, master being you. Vince Staples is the best Vince Staples he could ever be. 15 years from now, he can look back at this and say, well, I did my shit the right way. I stood on it and the people love me. My fans gonna grow with me. I got fans right now that's 70, 80 years old. I couldn't even believe this shit, but I'm like, you know, what am I supposed to do? Tell you you can't like me because you're a senior citizen? You're supposed to love me. <laughs> Snoop, you're probably one of the only rappers that can kick it with like real life gangbangers and Martha Stewart. Like it's just outstanding. <laughs> That's uh, the see, set of the show, nigga. When we shoot the soap, the yeah. show be just like bangers in the back, yeah. Martha right it's there. It's outstanding. It's, it's, it's great, as you can see right here. <laughs> you you just, but nah, oh, hey, Staples, I'm like you, cuz. What we supposed to do? We ain't gonna leave the homies out, cuz. Hey, Martha, meet the homies, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> we not talk color in Long Beach. That's yeah. one. If you grow up in Long Beach, you grow around everything: Mexican, Asian, whites, blacks, others. You grow around, grow up around everything. So there's no such thing as racism or, or color barriers. You see it all. So yeah. I was taught to love people. Sure. So that's why I be tripping off how motherfuckers be hating and having all this racism in them. You taught that shit. It ain't something you just wake up and do. You have to be taught that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Vince, you were on the episode of The Shop and Snoop was on The Shop as well. And you made a comment that was interesting to me. You said uh, some artists get in the predicament of please let me stay. <clears throat> what did you mean by that? I know when we was younger, everybody used to always say, oh, that's just such a blessing. It's such a blessing, such a blessing. And that turned into, oh, is that you should be so grateful. You should be so thankful. And, when we used to get good grades and stuff like that, right? You go home and tell your mom and your daddy you got good grades. And my daddy used to be like, nigga, you act like it wasn't supposed to happen. Like, right. don't, he didn't want to buy me nothing, but it's like, nigga, <laughs> you, tell him, it's like, you, telling me, you telling me you got good grades like you stupid. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, you act like everybody ain't work hard to be here. Right. And then people who feel like they not important end up switching up what they doing or switching up they positioning based on how other people feel in the rest of the world. And that's not true. Like, we was all, in Motel 6s and, and Sprinter vans and, um, and doing tours that was in the red. You had to pull money out of your pocket that you ain't have to make work because you was trying to get, get to a certain level. And it's really within hip hop that they make it seem like we so ungrateful. We so this last time I checked, the rock stars get coveted for trashing hotel rooms and catching cases and doing all this other stuff we do. But if we do one thing, it's over with forever. Uh, completely understand, completely understand. Stu, when you were coming up in hip hop, social media wasn't as big as it is now. Is there a drawback to being so candid on social media for you? Nah, man, you gotta, uh, you gotta be able to laugh at yourself first. Like, that's the first rule of being on social media, that you gotta be able to take the toughest punches of them all. Because um, 
that social media is a monster, man. It can really engulf you if you don't understand it. But I've always been a class clown. I've always been one that can juggle the ball and do my thing. So it don't bother me. And I just love being able to be the voice for the voiceless. You know, I have so many people that's following me that depend on me to say certain things and to do things that uplift them and inspire them. So sometimes I just be sitting at home and I be watching the news. Or if I'm watching something and I just take it on and be like, you know what? I think somebody at home would like to say this but can't say it. So let me say it for this motherfucker real quick. <laughs> so you so is no concern over the for criticism what? and drawbacks at all? Give a fuck. None at all. It's me. Yeah, hey, that's real. Holla at me. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. Snoop, you were mentioning that you looked at hip hop careers as maybe three years max, right? But you've had longevity over two decades. Like you've been in the game for a minute, certified OG. Vince, do you think that you can stay too long in hip hop? But like I'm saying, like what's was hip hop like? You still ain't, you still ain't answer that. You still ain't answer that question. If you check anything about hip hop, pop was considered a sellout in the beginning. When Hammer went pop, when Run DMC went pop, when LL, when certain motherfuckers got to a certain Will Smith, when certain motherfuckers got to a certain level, they was considered pop and they was considered sellout. Then once N.W.A. and then The Chronic came out, pop was considered cool because you, you had true to it. white kids enjoying black music for the first time and their parents couldn't say nothing. That's what made it pop. And then they grew up and then it became popular, so it was never explained that popular just means that everybody loves your music. It doesn't mean you a sellout, yeah, but, it just means you made but it. But at this point, ain't nobody popular but this Hip -hop shit. Hip-hop is bigger than anything, so we are pop. So so how you how you gonna stay in the world too long? This is the world, hip-hop is the world, nigga. It is. Like, what are you talking no, about? No, it is the world, but I'm, I guess what I'm saying is at what point in time do you need to reinvent yourself and come with a new angle? You look at Kendrick Lamar, you look, you look at all these people who are selling these sneakers and selling these t-shirts and they record labels ain't getting on that ain't going to Interscope and that ain't going to Columbia wherever Tyler signed to that's their money True. they not telling you to do that but that's who sent out the press releases yeah. so that's how we get to the point to where people feel like they got to do one thing because they count in their pockets mm -hmm. and whatever they want your movements to be dictated on their pockets visibility is important that's why a lot of black people just urban people in general don't feel like they worth much I come from here and he come from here and he just down the street doing something yeah. That's gonna make you feel better about yourself when you're doing that same thing. And that was always the thing that meant the most to me. Like, I don't care, give care about how many records he sold, I don't care about how much money he made. He was here. I just wanted to put Long Beach on, um, because Compton was so, like, they was aggressive when we came out. They was, everything was Compton, Compton, Compton. And what people don't know is that Compton and Long Beach didn't get along when I was making records in the beginning. When me and Dr. Dre connected, that was a real line. That was a line of niggas that had been killing each other for years that it stopped killing to create music and create a, a brotherhood. So it was like to see that was beautiful. And then just to hear him say that he does it, that's when you plant a seed and you watch the seed grow up. I didn't intentionally plant that seed for him to do that, but that's his spirit. Was, was there ever a point in time in either one of his careers where people would just say, oh, they're from LA, they're not from Long Beach, they're from LA? I made it a point to put in press releases, don't say I'm from LA, that shit bothered me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pinpoint where we from, cuz we from the LBC, the city by the sea. Just 45 minutes from LA, you can't yes, walk sir. to that motherfucker, so don't we tell from me. The turf. Like, nah, I understand We it. from the turf by the surf, you understand me? <laughs> Snoop, what, what's something you're looking forward to with the next generation, with guys leading the charge, like Vince Staples, who's doing incredible things, like his album that released yesterday. Um, what, what are you excited to see? It makes me want to make shit when I see youngsters and see the MCs and the rappers doing great videos, great music, being able to hold conversations, being intellectual. Like, I like this shit. Nigga can conversate, can communicate. When I came up, rappers just said, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's all we knew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like now to... <laughs> I got more on my shit, though, don't trip. <laughs> I say that to everybody. They always say, well, what advice would you give to a young rapper? You better get you some knowledge. Because first and foremost, to be a great rapper, you have to be knowledgeable. You can't just be some basic ABC kind of motherfucker. You got to have understanding on what you're writing about and how you're reaching people. Your pen has to be mightier than your sword. And you have to be a student. One thing about Snoop Dogg, he's a student. I love to study. I study to this day. I study the greats and I study the youngsters. Because the youngsters can teach you something too. You can always teach your old dog a new trick if you're willing to listen. I was broke like forever, right? Right. It's not that bad. Right. <laughs> you can't give me nothing but some money. You gonna tell me I'm gonna be broke again? For sure. Yeah. I'll be all right. 
So I guess what you're saying is you're not afraid to go back if you need Look to. Look at this, like this shit, it's not real, bro. None of this shit is real. No, no more specifically. Like you yeah. were just saying, like you said, the game making shit has been commercialized. Like it's always been commercialized. Just niggas used to go outside. This ain't precious when you done lived a real life. Right. No, completely agree. Cause you doing real things. Like you opened up a studio out here not too long ago, if I'm not mistaken, right? Getting down with the kids out here. Some producers out there at the YMCA, bunch yeah. of young producers and kids that got their mind right. I got with 1500 and came on down there and gave them a day of. A great experience, and there's some talent out here in Long Beach. Snoop, what's the album to In 2018. In 2018. <clears throat> when I first came in the game, an album was a body of work from an artist that poured their heart and soul into it with a bunch of musicians and writers yeah. and creatively gave you an experience that you didn't want to stop listening to until, until it went off and you would never rewind it. You would only let it play from top to bottom. That was an album when I was a kid. Now, I don't see too much of that. I right. see, I'm dropping tomorrow, I'm dropping next week, I'm dropping here, and it's not a setup of, let me get to know what you're doing, what it's about, it's just about making money right now. Does that frustrate you at all? Because you, you are an artist that had interludes and a lot of instrumentation, but you were saying that guys nah, can just come it don't quick. frustrate me because I work with Tupac. He just like these rappers, like just fast, Yeah. fast. He want to do like three songs in one day. Was there ever a particular moment like you remember like Pac just knocking out like a ton of songs? There? The nigga was only a, on, on the streets for like six months. <laughs> remember when he got yeah, out on Death Row? He yeah. was out this month and then he passed away this month. Right. It looked like he was out a long time. He was only out in 96. So he, yeah. he was the type of person like, nah, when, once the lyrics is done, I don't want to hear it. Pull the next beat up, get to the next song. That's what we pay the engineers for. Yeah. We pay them to mix the song. It was business. Right. Like, they're doing business right now. I, I, I love what they're doing. They're doing business. They fast. They, they You got to keep coming. That's how you're going to eat. You got to yeah. put it in their mouth. You got to keep feeding them. Yeah, that's real. That's real. Vince, I'm not letting you off the hook. You're going to answer the question. What's your question? What's next for you? Oh, I'm just chilling, you feel me? <laughs> I put this one out. I got... How many more we got? I got four okay. more. See how he looked over there? Yeah, he yeah. definitely. I like that. I like I that when a nigga look over there and there's somebody <laughs> over there that he only see. Yeah. How many of we got? He's you like, got, oh, okay. You got, yeah. I mean, you see, that's Corey Dark Alter. I'm just, saying, but I like the gangster <laughs> shit, though. That's, that's my it's era. It's over there. He got the blue T-shirt on so you can see that's, him. That's oh, hilarious. I see you over there laying low trying to blend in with the business <laughs> folks. I just make the music and go home. Like, there you go. He handled the difficult parts for me. Yeah. For me. I, I, I got an insulated team. He running a black-owned business. <laughs> and we just keep, we just keep, we just keeping it together. You but know. See, what that's I mean? that, that's that's dope that you say that. That you know how to delegate. See, a lot of times when we want to be a boss, we too bossy. A real boss has employees around him that's better than him, because he wants them to take his job one day. That's the real meaning of a boss. Is I want you to be better than me. I don't want to be better than you. I don't want to be the boss of you. I want you to one day be the boss so you can hire me so I can take a day off. <laughs> no, that's so real. And the reason I had asked Vince what's next is because I feel like both of you are very well versed. You can do multiple things. Oh, I gotta film a movie in like there a couple weeks. There you nigga, go. There you go. Why you ain't say that? Nigga, you over there just sitting down, having a good time. That's what we wanna <laughs> hear, nigga. Levels and layers to this shit, right. man. So can you, you share any details about the movie? How you forget that you're gonna be in a movie? I be doing a lot, bro. That's real. That's real. We did like, a, I don't know, the show count. We Like last year, the show count was like at 160 some shows and like, a year and a half, I be running around, you feel me? We got bills, we hey, got mortgages, hey, we paying for private school, you know, we trying to get it right. True. Hey, Vince, I'm gonna give you something to, to aspire to do. From 1999 to 2003, I did 200 shows a year, four years straight. Oh, we can do that. I want you to. <laughs> yeah. It's only 365 days in a year. We close, though. I'm trying to, I'm trying to yeah, say we, you do it, I want you yeah, to do it. Close. That's why I'm telling you that, because I know you finna be like, hey, uh, mm. I did uh, five years of 322 days. I want to hear that. No, that's real, but again, Vince, you're doing an incredible thing. What can we expect from Snoop? Because Snoop, you're pretty much everywhere these days. Uh, I just dropped a cookbook from Crook to Cook. Make sure y'all go get that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what's, your, what's, your, what's your favorite recipe in that cookbook? Uh, probably fried bologna sandwiches or... <laughs> or lobster... Or, my nigga, with the bubble in the middle. <laughs> Letting bubble eat brown sugar right in the middle. Yo, Hello. Snoop, what? <laughs> you, don't, you, you don't hit the fried bologna with the fork, so nigga, it don't pop. Nigga, you don't quit playing. I'm in the middle with the bubble. I'm just making sure you know what's going on, okay? 
You don't know nothing about that. Stop. Why are you? Why are you on me? What's up, Vince? What's good, G? I do something to you? Nah, I fuck with you. I'm fucking with you. You, you my guy. You. you my guy. Yeah. I appreciate y'all stopping by here in Long Beach, California for the third year of Complex Con. Y'all make some noise for Snoop Dogg and Vince Stable. <laughs> Brothers, appreciate y'all.